Welcome to OPLS TV. Today I'm in Singapore together with Francois Dota. He's a partner and head of merchant finance at European Asia Group here in Singapore. Francois, please give us a bit of information about your background and also about European Asia Group. Uh, in 2003, I had the chance to join uh, European Asia uh, Group at its inception. Uh, together with Christian Stoffer and uh, Craig Demick. Uh, basically, uh, European Asia uh, is a merchant banking organization that employs 35 people with a headquarters in Singapore, offices in Dubai, South Africa, Geneva, Romania and Turkey. We engage primarily in three uh, activities. Uh, the first one is the asset management business, which is dedicated to the trade and commodity finance business. The second one is a family office services and wealth management activity. And the last, which we just launched last year, is a private capital business unit. Group basis, we manage around 800 million US dollars of discretionary capital on behalf of institutional investors, pension funds, private wealth management, asset managers, and high net worth individuals. Francois, you're in charge of commodity finance. Explain us, what is commodity finance? In global international trade flows is about an 18 trillion industry. In that industry, the goods that are being moved from one country to another are generally split in four main categories. You have the fast mover consumer goods, you have all the automotive and transport, you have all the equipment, and eventually you have all the natural resources, commodities, raw material. The Entry point of trade and, and commodity finance is, is the following. You have a merchant that brings commodities from a point A to a point B. That merchant needs logistics, needs insurance, needs professional services, but mostly and very importantly needs finance to pay for the goods that is loading at a point A, transport and sells the same goods at the destination, which is the point B. So this is where the trade and commodity finance steps in. What is it? It's to provide short-term, revolving, self-liquidating financing to a merchant to bring goods from A to point B. And the main features of the commodity trade finance are the following. It's a weave recourse strategy. It is a collateralized loan by the underlying trade flow, meaning the commodity, which is a product that can be liquidated in the market in case of default. It is short term by nature, ranging from 30 days to 180 days. It is what we call in the jargon self-liquidating, meaning that the proceeds of the sales of the commodity are used to repay the corresponding loan. It is applied, the industry applies what we call a loan to value, meaning that the collateral, which is the security for the obligation of payment, is always in excess of the loan amount. One of the reasons why uh, Eurofinasia was created is we saw a structural opportunity to bring non-bank capital into the trade and commodity finance industry. There's a couple of reasons to that. First and foremost, over the last 15 years, international trade flows have grown tremendously between all the regions. Second thing, the prices of those underlying commodities have doubled, tripled, or have been multiplied fivefold in some instances. Therefore, to maintain the same business volume, much more capital was uh, needed. In the early 2000s, a lot of the bank capital went to the capital market, the real estate and the large multinational companies. And there is a segment that was definitely left behind, which is the middle segment market or what we call also the SME, SMI, which was deprived of that capital to run their trading and processing operation. If you add on the top of that, the 2008 global financial crisis, where the consequences was massive deleveraging 
in every of the source of lending activity, it created a space, a vacuum, that non-banking financial institution decided to enter. And trade finance funds, like us, is one of the vehicle or one of the corporate entity that allows investors to enter that structural opportunity. Uh, basically, what we do is we raise capital from institutional investors and through our asset management mandate, we go select the right counterparties, the right trade flows, and we provide financing for those companies. Let me describe a little bit the typology of companies and corporates that we, uh, that we finance. As, as a niche boutique asset management firm, we are agnostic to the uh, underlying commodity or the underlying country. What matters the most is to work with the right companies, the right corporates, the right businessmen. And therefore, all our selection process, which is very much similar to a banking, to an investment firm methodology and due diligence approach, is very anchored to that. What do we look at? Commodity business is pretty simple to understand. People, they buy and they sell goods, they bring in from point A to point B. But the execution skills needed to do that are far beyond the simplistic explanation that I just gave. Therefore, the number one criteria for us to engage into a company and create a financing relationship is the track record of the principal, of the management of the company. That is the number one criteria. The number two criteria, since we are a specialized commodity trade finance fund, is can we identify a trade flow that can be structured as per the mandate of the fund, i.e. taking the commodity and or the receivable as the collateral for the loan. Is that transaction having the right parameters in terms of risk return profile, in terms of liquidity profile? The number three parameter, and I think it's very important for the investors and, and the community, to understand that trade finance funds do not bank distress situations. All the companies that we finance do have banking lines. So the name of the game is to pick up a certain portion of the business volume which is not covered by the bank, where the company would rather use a non-banking institution rather than their own capital, for example. What benefits are you offering to your investors? I think there is several benefits for investors to enter a trade finance fund. The first one, I think it's a vehicle that gives them a proxy to the international trade flows. If you want to be exposed to trade finance, you can't buy just the shares of a bank because there will be different banking activity. It is very difficult for an institutional investor to buy a piece on a single deal basis of a trade finance deal from sold by a bank. So I think the, the number one benefit is the proxy to those international trade flows. Second, I think the, the model has been proven completely uncorrelated to the other asset classes. And I think that is what makes it the most appealing, whether we are in a bull or in a bear market, trade finance funds continue to perform, I would say, equally, generating income month on month on the base of the accrual of interests that are being charged to and the counterparts. Um, another benefit that has been tested during the, the financial crisis is the liquidity of trade finance fund. And there is the possibility to unwind the portfolio within 60 to 180 days, depending on the kind of flows that you are financing. Therefore, if an investor has a need of liquidity, 
trade finance fund because of their self-liquidating uh, nature are able to service their redemption on time and without any particular stress on the, on the portfolio. And one of the other features which is appealing to the investors in those very volatile markets is the low volatility of trade finance funds. I mean, if you look at the probably 10 to 15 trade finance funds in the world, most of them have a volatility below 2% per annum, which gives a great comfort to the investors in terms of the maximum drawdown that can happen. It's a very stable income generating performance decorrelated from the other class of assets. So what are some of the risks involved with trade finance? In terms of risk, trade finance, like probably any other investment strategy related to credit, have a very long list of uh, potential risk, direct risk, indirect risk. But I would like to, to, to summarize and pick up the three main risks, in, uh, in my opinion, of practitioner. And the first risk is what we call the performance risk of the borrower, meaning if the financing that we provide to a merchant, the underlying commercial transaction is not being performed, it is difficult to generate the liquidity from the sales of the good to be repaid. So the first and foremost thing that we look at when we onboard a new counterpart is the track record and the ability to perform their commercial obligation. Any failure to perform the underlying commercial obligation will result most likely into a default, therefore it is a risk. The second risk when you're lending money is obviously the credit risk of the counterpart. And I think for that, better than giving my own explanation, I rather use the International Chamber of Commerce survey, which came out in 2013, which over 700 millions of transactions resulting in hundreds of billions of trade flow of, among different regions, different banking institutions, the default rate was 0.02%, which makes it a synthetic AA credit risk. The last, and the one that keeps us awake at night, is the fraud risk. Because as I described, one of the features of commodity trade finance, it's a secure lending business. And if you take a commodity as a collateral, and if such commodity doesn't exist, or such commodity is financed twice, you definitely have a much larger problem than a simple default, where you could take the commodity and liquidate it in the market, which is the beauty of commodities, which are usually by and large fungible products. Coffee is coffee, sugar is sugar, and it can be sold at a discount to another party that will use it, pay you, and you can redeem the loan accordingly. To mitigate the, the nightmare of any commodity trade finance, which is the, the fraud, we have put several procedures in place. More importantly, I think it is important to understand that this is a dynamic risk management approach. What is good today with a good counterparty, something wrong can happen in his business life and a good company can become a bad company and cross the line and commit fraud. So therefore, it is not a static risk management model. It's a perpetual transactional verification with the party that any given time you have the collateral that exists, number one, and that collateral is pledged, mortgaged to the lender, which here in that case is the trade finance fund. In that dynamic and, and, and very uh, procedural verification that there is no fraudulent transaction that is presented to the financier, there is one that ranks above all that very methodical analysis. And this is also one of the key aspects of lending, is know your customer. You need to stay as close as possible 
to the principal, to the management, follow the market where they are, follow their personal evolution, follow the business evolution, to be able to anticipate and detect. Then, on the top of that, you have the usual proper risk management and procedural aspects, but the, go the two goes together, in my opinion. At European Asia, you run three different products, three different funds. Please tell us more about those. We started with our first fund, the LH Asian Trade Finance Fund, in September 2006. Just celebrated eight years of track record. As the, time, the, the name of the fund uh, says, that vehicle is exclusively focused on providing commodity trade finance fund to Asian corporates, which uh, if I had to describe uh, that, it ranges mostly from India all the way to China to Australia in that triangle with obviously an important concentration of business flow in Southeast Asia and especially Singapore, which is one of the largest commodity trading hub in the world. In terms of size, the fund is about $240 million as we speak. The return profile is between 4 to 5% net per annum uh, to investor in US dollar. And the volatility profile has been below 1% since inception. I think one thing that needs to be noticed is the fund has always produced positive return month on month and the fund has never been suspended, gated during the global financial crisis where every fund manager suffered important redemption. We have another twin brother, I would say, called the Dynamic Trade Finance Fund that caters to the same kind of typology of companies and trade flows but with a different geographical focus. It is about $200 million as we speak. And the idea behind was to take advantage of the opportunity post European sovereign debt crisis, where the usual commodity trade finance banks decided to reduce their capital allocation to the middle segment market, which is the heart and the core of the companies that we finance. That fund, as, as the name says, a little bit more of a dynamic uh, mandate, which allows him to pick the flows and the place of doing the business in a slightly broader range, which mostly Middle East, ex-Soviet Union, and some selective uh, business in Africa, with the main trading hub around those companies that we finance being Switzerland and Dubai. We have a last fund uh, which we jointly manage with uh, our partner Asia Investment, which is an asset management arm based out of Dubai, which is a subsidiary of Kuwait listed investment company, uh, which is a Sharia compliant trade finance fund. There's, there's been a demand in the Gulf from the GCC investors to invest into trade finance, but it had to be Sharia compliant. Therefore, we have teamed up and started also in 2011 that fund, which specifically focus only on Islamic trade finance fund, with business obviously in the Middle East and also Southeast Asia. I think I, one of the questions that comes back very often for investors is, why is the Asian fund target return is slightly below the dynamic trade finance fund, which aims at providing 7 to 8% net return to investors. It is mostly due to liquidity in the regions where the funds are active. Let's face it, Asia had 15 years of economic growth. Companies have repaired their balance sheet. Banks haven't suffered so much from the global financial crisis. Therefore, the liquidity, both in the banking and on the corporate side balance sheet, is healthy. On the other side, the dynamic fund, which focuses more in the Middle East, which is always somehow in and out of geopolitical issues. Europe, with all the, the flows in the banking system that we know in the past three to four years, 
are more deprived of liquidity. Therefore, it is for a similar business profile, there is the chance to capture an additional premium. Tell us more about the outlook of trade finance as a strategy. I think if you ask me, the, the outlook for the next five to ten years is just bright. Couple of reasons. First of all, I think investors have now are aware of trade finance as an asset class. The fund managers has been performing, therefore it has been well accepted in the investors community. I think one main trend which trade finance fund will benefit from should be the raise of the interest rate. One day it will happen and trade finance fund are positively correlated to any increase of the base rates, which we will be able to pass on partially to the companies that we are financing. And I think last and very importantly is trade finance is a business that has been around for forever and uh, it will continue to be there and it's all about implementing in a very diligent way the selection process, the structuring, the risk management and the portfolio construction. And if you apply methodically those parameters, you are able to deliver to investors a nice income generating strategy which is uncorrelated to the other asset class, produce positive results on a monthly basis and stay within the liquidity terms that are given by the investors.